Dear Dynacom family, good day. Welcome to the part two of the video where we will discuss about the condition monitoring methods to control and reduce the main engine cylinder liner and piston rings wear. When we talk of cylinder liner wear and condition monitoring methods, there are various actions that we can do to monitor the condition and timely avoid or control the undue wear of the cylinder liner and piston rings. Under piston inspection provides us careful information about the condition of the liners, pistons, piston rings and cylinders. This also helps us identify if there is any abnormal wear going on that we need to be particularly careful about. The inspection consists of visually examining the piston, the piston rings and the lower part of the cylinder liner directly through the scavenge ports. The focus needs to be kept on identifying any wear that has either taken place or aggravated since the last inspection or especially after the running in procedure. Checking the liner surface condition is crucial. The condition of the liner surface plays a significant role with regards to the scuffing. To ensure a proper oil film between the liner and the piston rings, the liner surface structure needs to be sufficiently open. Check for the scuffing or scoring marks on the cylinder liner. These marks may indicate an issue with the lubrication, fuel quality or abnormal operating conditions. Check for signs of corrosion on the liner surfaces. Corrosion can be caused by the ingress of acidic combustion byproducts or improper cooling water quality or temperature. Check for any cracks on the liner wall which may be due to the fuel impeachment. That is due to the defective fuel injector. The effect of the scuffing can also be seen with the rise in surface temperatures. For example, at the cylinder liner wall. If excessive deposits accumulate on the piston top land, these deposits can polish the liner surface and the running surface structure may over time become smooth. Just like a mirror, especially in cases when an engine is running on VLSFO or LSMGO. As a result, the small cavities associated with the open graphite flakes may no longer retain the lubrication oil sufficiently, and micro seizures and possibly scuffing may occur, which would be visible during the under piston inspection. During inspection, check for any evidence of the liner scuffing and red deposits formed locally on the piston crowns or on the top edge, with red cooled iron burns in the scavenge port. These might be experienced typically on the engine cylinders burning VLSF for distillate grade. VLSFO from such liner scuffing cases have typically low CCA. AI and high ECN, that is estimate C10 number, as compared to HSFO. About all of these wears, we have already talked in detail in our last video that can be referred to at this point or after you finish watching this video. Remember, first step in solving an issue is identifying it in the first place. So we must compare records of the last inspection with this one to find out the difference between the two and identify what has indeed changed. During the underport and scavenge port inspections, the movement of piston rings should be checked carefully. If due to thick and hard deposits of carbon, the piston rings can't move freely in their grooves, dark areas will often appear on the upper part of the cylinder wall. And this may not be visible at port inspection and would need a mirror. This indicates lack of sealing. That is combustion gas is blowing by between the piston rings and cylinder liner. The blow by will promote oil film breakdown which in turn will increase cylinder liner wear. Sticky piston rings will often lead to broken piston rings. The free movement of the rings in the grooves is essential and can be checked either by pressing them with a wooden stick that is through the scavenge ports or by turning the engine alternately ahead and astern to check the free vertical movement. Another important thing that needs to be carried out during this inspection is wear measurement of the piston rings. The wear on the top piston ring can be determined by measuring the remaining depth of the CL groove using a vernier gauge. But wear can also be estimated visually simply by checking the size of the remaining rounding on the upper and the lower edges of the running surfaces. From new, the rounding has a radius of 1.6 millimeter on 60-70 centimeter bore engines. Thus, a simple visual inspection through the scavenge ports confirming that the rounding is still visible or partly visible is an indication that the wear limit has not been reached, that many more hours are left before the piston overall is necessary. The depth of the pressure relief groove, that is CL groove, of the top piston ring to be measured using a vernier gauge. This depth is an indicator of the piston ring wear. It is well known that due to the penetration of hard solid particles in the space between the ring and the piston groove, leads the perforation of the horizontal working surface of the piston ring groove and creates so-called pockmark surface. Ultimately, this development leads to the scuffing of the piston rings in the grooves and the loss of its sealing ability. To prevent this problem, the horizontal surface of the piston ring groove is coated with chromium layer which contributes to extend the time between the overalling of the cylinder unit. The vertical ring groove clearance measurement is an indicator of the wear taking place at the chromium plating in the ring groove. Ring grooves wear faster in two areas. Number one, the chromium plating on the floor of the ring groove and number two, the outer edge of the ring groove. 
using a feeler gauge measure the top and bottom clearances between the ring and the ring grooves. The total of the top and bottom clearances must not exceed the value specified on the piston data plate in the maker's manual. Sunmet coating has been introduced to reduce the piston ring wear and to increase the scuffing resistance. The Sunmet coating is a piston ring coating with the same lifetime as the piston ring itself. Aluminium bronze coating that is also called as alu coat is applied on all Sunmet sprayed piston rings to facilitate the running in procedure. If the piston rings are Sunmet coated, it should be carefully evaluated to have not peeled off. A peeled off Sunmet coating may allow gas blow by between the piston ring surface and the cylinder liner. That is, the Sunmet coating should not peel off in any position in the full height of the ring or in the full height of one of the finger lock parts. Minor local peeling off on the piston ring upper or lower edge is acceptable. Small points of peeling off up to the halt of the ring height or halt of the finger height is acceptable. To measure the thickness of cermet coating, an ultrasonic thickness measurement gauge is used. Piston ring cermet coating thickness should be measured during under piston inspections. Before using the USG for measurement, its calibration should be carried out. Depending upon the maker's instruction, the gauge should be calibrated using the standard template or any other method as advised by the maker. On standard template, the USM gauge should show a zero reading before it is used to measure the thickness of the cermet coating of the piston ring. To measure the cermet coating thickness, touch the probe at 90 degrees to the cermet coating ring and it will immediately display the remaining cermet coating thickness. For good measurements, the ring coating thickness should be taken at least on the four sides to get a good sense of the average cermet coating thickness of the piston ring being used. However, in case it is clearly visible that the cermet coating has worn out, or worn off then it's time to replace the ring. It is advisable to consult the manual from piston ring maker to find applicable limits on your ship. However, as an example, here is what man recommends for different thickness readings. Above 100 micrometer, note the value of the measured cermet coating thickness of the piston rings. Increase the inspection frequency of the piston rings with a cermet coating thickness of less than 100 micrometer. Schedule overall of the piston rings with a cermet coating thickness between 100 to 50 micrometer or less and overall piston rings with a cermet coating of 50 to 20 micrometer at first opportunity. Thickness measurements of 20 micrometer or less should be interpreted as no remaining coating due to the inaccuracy of the most coating thickness measurement gauges. During under piston inspections, it is important to check if all the cylinder lubricator quills are properly injecting lube oil in the cylinder. For this, you may have to operate the alpha lube oil pump manually and use its primary loop function and then visually check or verify from the scavenge ports using mirror if it is required if the lube oil is indeed injected through each of the quills properly. The alpha lubricator load dependent lubrication of the cylinder is performed by a separate cylinder lubrication system on the MAN B&W engines which requires some daily checks and important maintenance to ensure that the system is reliable. The quality of the cylinder oil injected at the cylinder injection points is controlled by the cylinder lubrication control system. Each cylinder lubricator injector that is quill is effectively a non return valve that is opened by the pressure oil directed to it by the lubricator control system. We have similarly electronic control pulse lubrication system in Vatsila RTA and RT Flex engines. This system delivers accurately metered low dependent quantities of lube oil to the cylinder liner running surface at the precise timing required. In pulse feed type, the cylinder oil is fed as a pressurized pulse through the lubricators exactly into the piston packages and onto the piston skirt from where it is evenly distributed around the circumference of the liner. In pulse jet type, the lubricators deliver the lube oil as pulse jet feeding into the liner wall. Both of these lubrication systems should be properly maintained to a high degree of confidence to ensure that it's working optimally and providing optimal lubrication to minimize any wear. Daily checks during the engine running include checking the differential pressure in the suction filter for the pump station for excessive pressure buildup by observing manometer and the pressure should be in the green range. The oil pressure should be between 40 to 50 bars. The green flashing diode on the feedback intermediate box located near the lubricators must be checked which indicates that the lubrication oil is being injected. Cylinder lubricators, inlet accumulators and outlet accumulators must be checked for nitrogen pressures. The inlet accumulator's nitrogen pressure should be around 25 bars or as specified in the maker's manual. An outlet accumulator pressure must be around 1.5 bars or as specified in the manual. If the nitrogen required to be charged in the accumulator, then after charging, the sealing plug on top of the accumulator must be tightened as per specified torque stated in the manual. 
On monthly basis, check the electrical connection and the wiring in the PSP panels and the main panel and make sure that there is no oil leakage from the feedback sensor cable to the PSP panel. In case of pulse lubrication system in Varsal engine, check for the metering pressure for any blockage, trapped air and or the dry faults. Accumulator must be charged with the required pressure as per the maker's instructions. The filter before the lubricating modules should be checked periodically and renewed once found dirty. STA is another tool to monitor and test the condition of the liner wear and help keep a tab on the condition of the cylinder liner wear. Our vessels are weekly testing the iron content. They are also performing the corrosion test and BN in the scavenge drain oil using the iron corrosion testing kit. The ferrous content in the scavenge drain oils gives a good idea of how much iron is wasted off the cylinder liner surfaces. For most accurate results of the scavenge drain analysis by the lab, the scavenge drain samples from the under piston side should be collected as soon as possible after thorough cleaning of the under piston areas of the cylinders. Engines should be running at the higher loads while scavenge drain samples are collected for lab analysis. The cylinder scrape down analysis allows us to assess the performance of each cylinder unit separately. The residue oil taken from the piston underside gives us an indication of the wear performance that is by measuring the content of the iron that is ferrous, copper and chromium. It also allows us to find the combustion quality contaminants such as water or system oil and it also tells us the remaining base number BN which is an indicator of the protection against corrosive wear. Based on these results the report gives us recommendations for monitoring the stuffing box performance, checking and optimizing the cylinder oil feed rate and the time between overalls. These reports to be considered and recommendations to be implemented carefully. Continuous evaluation of scavenge drain oil analysis results is recommended. For engines running on HSFO, the evaluation primarily concerns corrosive wear elements, that is iron oxides. While for low sulfur fuels, abrasive or adhesive wear elements, iron in metallic form can be expected. With the change in the fuels used on board ranging from HFO to VLSFO to LSMGO, the corrosion and deposit control is more important than ever. The main factor that contributes to the corrosion and deposit control is the use of correct BN cylinder oils. Corrosion control is applicable when using fuels with high sulfur content and deposit control is applicable when using the fuels with low sulfur content that is less than 0.5% of sulfur. For high sulfur fuel oil, a higher feed rate is required to neutralize the sulfuric acid in the oil film before it reaches the liner wall. This amount is proportional with the fuel sulfur percentage, but sensitivity that is FRF differs from engine to engine depending upon the engine running conditions. BN 140 cylinder oil or category 2 BN 100 cylinder oils are also now becoming popular in achieving this corrosion control effectively. Also, low dependent cylinder liner cooling system which maintains cylinder liner's temperature around 115 to 120 degrees Celsius in newer ME electronic engines is effective in handling corrosion control. It is recommended closing down the LDCL system when using up the 0.5% VLSFO. However, engine ECS will close down the LDCL system automatically when low sulfur content value is entered into the cylinder lubrication page on the MOP in the main engines. Deposit control is applicable when using VLSFO, LSMGO and LSMGO with very low sulfur content and cylinder lubricating oil with higher detergency is required. As of now, we are using BN40, BN70 and BN100 oils on vessels using only VLSFO. Usually, we are using BN40 oils and then alternating that is changing between BN70 and BN100 oils in between for a few days depending upon the results of the under piston inspection, monitoring iron content from the drain analysis from onboard testing and lab STA reports. In case the higher BN cylinder oils are needed to keep the engine clean from the deposits, attention must be paid to secure against the cylinder liner bore polish when engine running on VLSFO. Therefore, alternating between the high BN and low BN oils as above can reduce the risk of cylinder liner bore polish, but it must be done strictly basis under piston inspection and STA testing results. For the vessels having EGCS, their primary cylinder oil lubrication is BN100 with the use of BN40 when the EGCS is not in use. However, with the introduction of the EEDI and EEXI, where the existing ships are running on the lower RPM, with Chapoli implemented, a new Category 2 oil has also been introduced. When Category 2 BN40 oil is in use, then juggling between BN40 and BN100 oils, where the VLSFO is being used on the vessels, is not required. Cat 2 cylinder oils have excellent overall performance with a special focus on cleaning ability. Our target is to optimize the cylinder oil feed rate by balancing consumption, cleanliness, 
wear and avoiding hard contact that is micro seizures which potentially can lead to scuffing on piston rings and cylinder liners. This brings us to the final chapter of this video, that is performance adjustment. When we say performance adjustment, we refer to adjusting the cylinder oil feed rate according to the evaluated condition of the cylinder liner, piston rings, top landing and associated parts. However, minimum cylinder oil feed rate should be kept at 0.6 grams per kilowatt hour in alpha lubricator systems. For every given cylinder oil in relation to the fuel in use, depending upon the sulfur percentage, it is required to adjust the cylinder oil feed rate. The guide feed rate for Wartzilla RTA and RTflex engines with the PLS is 0.8 grams per kilowatt hour of cylinder lubricating oil. The feed rate can be adjusted depending upon the engine condition, fuel sulfur content and engine load. As your vessel may not always be steaming at full speeds or may steam at slow speeds during any voyage, it becomes particularly important to avoid sulfur and carbon deposits to avoid cylinder liner wear. If a scavenge space inspection reveals excessive deposits, it may be required to decrease the feed rate of a given cylinder oil. Or if slightly more piston ring wear is noticed than the previous inspection, then this feed rate may need to be increased. Simply speaking, we have to keep adjusting the cylinder oil feed rate based on the condition assessment of cylinder liner, piston rings and associated parts. It is important to make a daily measurement of the cylinder oil consumption and compare it with the calculated oil consumption as shown in the MOP interface or alpha HMI. The actual oil consumption should be within 0 to 10% of the MOP values. If the actual consumption is lower than the MOP figures, we may have to increase this to the safe setting of 1.2 grams per kilowatt hour we have to investigate and then resolve the issue. Monitoring the cylinder liner walls temperature can prevent scuffing caused by high temperatures. If there are high liner temperature fluctuations, scuffing can be suspected. Cylinder oil feed rate to be increased in range of 1.3 to 1.4 gram per kilowatt as shown in the HCU lubricator wear rate oil dosage graph. For ME electronic engines, the cylinder liner wear is minimum when the feed rate is kept at 1.2 grams per kilowatt hour Fuel analysis reports should be properly consulted and lapse analysis recommendations should be followed. Properly treating and purifying the fuel oil which contains cat fines or water can prevent undue cylinder liner and piston ring wear. I hope today's video was helpful and it may help you better understand your main engine. You can also learn about types of cylinder liner wear by watching the first part of this video. With a wish for smooth seas and tailwinds, it's goodbye for now.